UC Berkeley lost a few miles from the San Francisco area, famous for their academics. However, towards the end of the 1960s, they grew into a political might as students gathered in the tens of thousands to protest for their civil liberties and human rights in general. The Berkeley riots were a period marked by political reform across the nation. They began in 1964. These movements grew in the following years, creating massive protests with a national following. The Berkeley riots continued to the 60s and into the 70s. The causes, however, changed dramatically. Initially focusing around the free speech movement, this was led by people like Mario Savio and other students who sought to end the ban on political protests on college campuses. Soon, attention shifted toward the Vietnam War after they gained the right to protest. Events like the mining of Haiphong Harbor, which resulted in a major escalation on behalf of the Americans, gave rise to massive protests all over the United States, especially in Berkeley. Even though the Vietnam War was the root of many of the riots, a lot also focused on student rights, with students fighting with the administration over things like class schedules, civil rights, and abusive treatment from the police. The riots would always begin as a demonstration, okay, and, but because of the, all the zeal and this tremendous sense of power that if they wanted something, what they, all they needed to do was to riot and to demonstrate. First demonstration I was at, that, uh, kind of expected to lead to a, uh, violence and, and they weren't disappointed was a demonstration in six, summer of 67. Uh, everybody would gather in the streets, uh, there'd be some guys with signs, a few people standing up on boxes giving speeches. Um, they're pretty lame actually. Uh, there, uh, there'd be some Hell's Angels, uh, you know, throwing fireworks around and everybody with bottles of beer and it, well, mostly a party, okay. A big uh, impromptu street party, fully aware that, uh, and they had barricades up, meaning uh, just roadblocks that cars couldn't get through. And fully aware that if they kept this up, the cops would come after a while and tell them to disperse. Okay, and if they didn't disperse, then they'd come back with, the, with more cops and shields and batons and such. The students at Berkeley believed to be in a renaissance of sorts. They saw that their protests made a difference, and they liked the power they felt as they made changes. This brought a shift in perspective from the students as they realized they had the ability to affect politics on campus. And on a grander scheme, they had the ability to influence the national government. These protests, however, brought increasing levels of police retaliation as the protesters threatened to shut down the city. They had various tactics this one which is called the flying wedge <laughs> which would be uh, 80 cops you know with, with riot actually the, initially they didn't have the, the riot gear that you see today they just had like their motorcycle helmets and batons uh, now they're much scarier uh, in the way they show up but, but the flying wedge was something where they, they just move into the crowd and, and I guess it was wedge shaped and they would uh, it, was, it was meant to bulldoze a path okay uh, but you have to was that the cops were outnumbered like 10,000 to, if you had 100 cops, they were vastly outnumbered and, and they are actually uh, justifiably scared, right? And so if, at some point they started, like it, if the cops were in a position where they, they'd move into a crowd and then they'd probably be surrounded by another crowd, okay, they would panic and the last thing they wanted to do was to get isolated inside the crowd and have the crowd start singling them out and beating them up. So they tried to avoid that, and generally, if they judged that there were too many there, then they would um, they back out and call for reinforcements. One of the largest riots came in 1969 when the People's Park riots began. At the Berkeley campus, land is scarce, so the university bought up as much land as they could when the opportunity presented itself. In 1969, they bought up a plot of houses near the dorm rooms, planning to build a sports field. However, they ran out of funding, leaving a bulldozed flat plot of land in the middle of the city. People from all around Berkeley soon poured into what appeared to be abandoned land, setting up camps, creating their own park, even planting trees and maintaining the field. After months of camping out in the park, the police were called in on May 15, 1969. At 4.30am, Ronald Reagan orders California Highway Patrol and Berkeley Police onto the site to remove squatters in People's Park. Beginning at noon, May 15th, about 3,000 people appeared in Sproul Plaza at nearby UC Berkeley for a rally, the original purpose of which was to discuss the Arab-Israeli conflict. However, when students were alerted to the police action, they joined the People's Park riots. Several people spoke. Then, 
Marco Lernick ceded the free speech platform to the ASUC student body president, Dan Gale. Because students were concerned about the fencing off and destruction of the park, Gale said later that he never intended to precipitate a riot. However, when he shouted, let's take the park, police turned off the sound system. The crowd responded spontaneously, moving down Telegraph Avenue towards People Park, chanting, we want the park. That evening, Governor Reagan declared a state of emergency in Berkeley and sent in 2,700 National Guard troops. The Berkeley City Council symbolically voted 8-1 to one against the decision. For two weeks, the streets of Berkeley were patrolled by National Guardsmen who broke up even small demonstrations with tear gas. Governor Reagan was steadfast and unapologetic. He believed any actions taken to end the protests and the public disturbance would be justified. He refused to apologize, stating, once the dogs of war have been unleashed, you must expect things will happen and that people being human will make mistakes in both sides. And Alameda County Sheriffs were the, the real uh, brutal ones. Okay. And they dressed in these uh, bright blue jumpsuits and hence got the name the Blue Meanies, okay, which is also from the Beatles song. And the Blue Meanies were not to be trifled with. <laughs> I mean, these are the guys that would tried to cause as much bodily damage as they could on the way to drag the students and putting them in the paddy wagons. Um, this, I saw the helicopters circling and circling, and then on one particular circle, it comes in really low, like level with the Campanile, the bell tower, and this giant plume smoke comes up, smoke, white smoke comes out the back of it. I knew exactly what it was, and I was really, really glad that I uh, had decided to pick the stadium, not go to the rides and go swimming. And, and I said, oh yeah, that's, that's, those guys are getting hell. I'm sure I'm glad I'm not there. And, you know, I'm just feeling really um, cool about my decision and continue on up to the swimming pool. And the only problem was that the Berkeley Hills um, make Berkeley a lot like Los Angeles Basin. Okay, so all the wind comes in and sweeps up through the canyon. Um, and so all of this pepper gas that had been sprayed out of the helicopter. Much of it got blown up through the canyon you know, where I was and for about half an hour. You had all these uh, adults and kids uh, running around screaming on account of the uh, pepper gas that was on their bodies. The size of the student body at Berkeley seemed to be one of the most influential aspects of their movements. The students were members of the generation known as the Baby Boomers, who had a massively inflated population due to the post-World War II breeding bonanza. The students vastly outnumbered the surrounding citizens, and on a national scale, the college-age youth made up a large component of the American population, more so than ever before. This increased size gave them extremely loud voice on a national scale, as they could easily sway elections. Although the students of the 60s and 70s had an extremely large population, their tactics and ethics became a standard for all colleges. College protests now all seek to emulate the historic Berkeley riots of the 60s.